Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> August 13th, 1940. This is London. As the air warfare in Britain increases in tempo, London remains calm and outwardly undisturbed. In this phase of the war, the hope of London, and perhaps the hope of the Empire, rests with the fighter command of the Royal Air Force. Comment from London by CBS newsman Edward R. Murrow, 20 years ago. Mr. Murrow's vivid wartime broadcast will furnish much material for tonight's thrilling special broadcast, The Battle of Britain. The Battle of Britain will recall the dauntless courage of the British people under blitz bombardment, under the threat of imminent invasion. CBS News presents this conclusive page from World War II history tonight. Don't miss it. Another of the outstanding special services of CBS News, covering the past as well as the present in world affairs. The Battle of Britain, from CBS News. On CBS Radio tonight. Might as well stand up, Digger. They're just about ready for you. Bring them over here, Glick. Yeah. We'll start walking. Mighty lucky to find you so near a cottonwood grove. You don't know what we'd have done otherwise. Uh, you'd have thought of something, Billy. Like what? You ain't above shooting a man in the back, are you? You could make me mad talking like that, Digger. And that worries me a lot. Oh, shut up. Hurry up, Glick. Let's get this over with. We've been waiting on you, Pete. Robo looking so long faced about. What I told you before, this ain't right. You telling me it ain't right to hang a horse thief? It ain't right to hang nobody the way you're doing it. And I don't hold with lynching. Hanging a horse thief ain't lynching. You can't even prove he's a thief. Then what was he doing with our horses? I was camped. I didn't know nothing about your horses. Well, I suppose they wandered up to you in the night, huh? I don't know how they got there. Yeah. <laughs> but we do. That ain't so, Glick. We don't know nothing of the kind. I've lost horses the same as you and Pete. And I don't like it any better than you do. But just because this man was camped near a few head of yours, there's no proof he was stealing them. We're wasting time listening to you, Robo. Yeah. You don't like what we're doing once you just get out. All right. I'm going to get out now. You keep your mouth shut about this, you hear? You wouldn't dare say nothing, Glick. You better not. Yeah. That noose looks kind of empty dangling there. Why don't you put his neck here? Yeah. You men are nothing but murderers. There's no way to go to your maker, calling people names. Yeah. Now get on your horse. Go on. What are you going to do? Hold the rope? No, of course not. I'm going to tie it to the trunk of the tree, and we'll slap that horse out from under you. Get mounted now. How can I get mounted with my hands tied? Oh, well, I'll help you. Come on. There. All right, Pete, take up the slack, will you? Yeah. 
and get that rope tied. I'll go get our horses. You might have the decency to wait and put a bullet in me. Bullets cost seven cents apiece, Digger. You were worse than I thought. That rope tied enough. You figure it. I guess it'll do. Yeah. All set, Digger? I ain't afraid. Wouldn't matter if you was, would it? You're all safe. Let's get him up. Okay. I'll give his horse a lick and then we'll ride off. I ain't got no stomach to watch a man hang. You cowards. Come on, Glick. Get it over with. All right, let's go. into them trees. I couldn't fight them. Not the two of them. But I sure didn't aim to let them hang you. I don't know. I don't know how to thank a man for saving me. There's no need to. Robo. Robo, it's the truth. It's honest truth. I ain't a horse thief. I never thought you was, Digger. Can you stand? Yeah. Yeah. Look, if we ain't but ten miles from Dodge, I'd be proud to buy you a drink. All right. I I got something mighty interesting to tell you on the way. We're waxing all the floors. Not me. You only have to move the furniture. All week I've had a nagging backache with sleepless nights still dragged out. That's why I should think you'd want relief for that backache. But how? Try don't pills. Good advice. That don't pills, an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains, may come on with overexertion, emotional upset, or everyday stress and strain. Stone's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Dome's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Dome's pills today. To save money, buy Dome's big economy size. for a minute. He said for you to sit down. He'll be right back out. <laughs> you tell him about Joe Digger? Well, I told him about the lynching and how you cut him down. Is that all? Well, I started to tell him the rest, but he was in a hurry. He said he'd hear it all from you. It's bad, ain't it? Yeah, well, you're doing everything you can about it. I hate informing on people. Yeah, but murder's worse, really. Oh, here he is. Isn't it all over? Hello, Marshal. Sit down. Uh, I've been sitting there. Ain't time for it. Uh, Chester told me about what happened. That was a fine thing you did, Robo. I don't hold with lynching, Marshal. 
No. And I don't hold with murder either. Huh? Well, what do you mean? He's going to kill him. He says he don't care how he does it. This Joe Digger, you mean? That's what he said, Marshal. And he meant it, too. Well, my land, you sure can't blame him much after what they've done to him. I didn't say if his life so as he could go on a killing spree, Chester. Where is he, Robo? I left him over at the Long Branch. I, I don't want to come point him out to you, but he he's a tall fella. No beard. Wearing a black hat. I'll find him. Come on, Chester. Uh, are Glick and Pate in town, Robo? I ain't seen him, and I sure don't want to. No. Now, you better keep out of sight for a while. I aim to, Marshal. Good. I take it you know what happened. Yeah. Then what are you doing here? Why aren't you out after Brick and Pate? One thing at a time, Kitty. Well, if you don't believe it about Joe Beaver now, you will when you see him. He's got a mark around his neck like a black snake. It's a horrible thing, that Lynchin' man. Yeah, that's about the worst thing I know. What about those two men? I mean, since they really didn't hang him. They came close enough for me, Kitty. Oh, there he is. He just came in. Headed to the bar, you see? Yeah. Uh, no, Chester, you stay here. Huh? All right, sir. You, Joe Digger? <laughs> yeah, that's me. I hear you ran into some trouble today. Yeah, I seen you talking to Miss Kitty. Well, I came in here looking for you. Well, what for? I'm a marshal. Oh? Somebody tries to lynch a man, I want to know about it. <laughs> it's all over, Marshal. They didn't kill nobody. You mean you'd like for me to forget about it? Well, nothing happened. I'm alive, ain't I? Seems to me you take it pretty easy, Digger. An ordinary man might be kind of mad about it. Ah, they made a mistake, Marshal. They thought they was doing right. Uh, a little rope burn ain't gonna hurt me. Digger, don't you think you're wasting your time lying to me? What? I came here to tell you to leave Glick and Pete to me. Which one you going after first, Marshal? Why, so you can get the other one? They don't deserve a trial. They're going to get one. And so will you if you kill either one of them. I've been pretty lucky so far. Look, Digger, I know how you feel about this, but stay out of it. From now on, this is my business. Now, you're denying me what's mine. And that kind of thing is going to lead you to the end of another rope. And that's not worth it. And to me, maybe it is. Don't be a fool. Think about it. Okay. I'll think about it. It's midnight now, and... I'll think about it till tomorrow midnight. By then, you better have him in jail, Marshal. Sure. Them are you. I 
bet them glitz ain't even home, Mr. Jones. Yeah, there's smoke coming out of the chimney, Chester. Dinner? Not very likely Miss Glick's going to be feeding the law today. No, no, I reckon not. All right, let's leave him here. Hey, that horse used a loose shoe, ain't Miss Dillon? I'll have to fix it before we start back. If I can do it, the lens is too. He won't have much choice about it. Think you'll put up a fight? I don't know. He might. Hello, Glick. Oh. Marshal Dillon, Chester. Please. What are you doing here? Aren't you going to ask us inside? Well, sure. Come on in. Uh, uh, the woman's done with dinner, but I'll, uh, I'll tell her to find something before you. No, don't bother. I, I want to talk to you. Oh? What about? You and Hank Pate. Me and Pate. No. Uh, we'll go pick him up when we leave here. Well, what do you mean? I'm taking you both to jail. Oh, wait a minute, Marshal. Do I have to explain it to you? Well, it might help. You walk into a man's house and arrest him, he ought to know what it's about. Didn't you and Pate murder a man yesterday? What man? Joe Digger. Digger. I never heard of no Joe Digger. And you shouldn't go around lynching strangers. Oh, oh, well, that's what this is all about. <laughs> oh, yeah, I seen that fellow, Marshal. Yeah, I, I was riding right by there yesterday. I seen him hanging. But I, I don't know who did it. Sure wasn't me and Pete. Digger says it was. What? He says you and Pate lynched him. Robo, Robo told you. Robo cut him down. Digger's alive. Well, then what are you after us for? Attempted murder. You're going to get at least 20 years, Glick. But it'll save your life. What do you mean? Digger's after you. He's going to kill you if he gets a chance. But I beat him here. Now I want to get to Pates before he does. Pates? Uh, Pates, he's in Dodge today. And we better get moving. You're a prisoner, Glick. Oh, no. Wait a minute, Marshal. Keep an eye on him, Chester. I'm going to take my horse around to the barn and fix that shoe, and then we'll leave. Huh? Okay, sir. Chester, where's Glick? He ran out back. Well, you've been hit. He got me in the arm. It was his wife, Miss Dillon. She called to him from the kitchen, and he went to the door, and she switched him a gun. He snapped off a shot at me and ran out back so I could move. She stood in the doorway so I couldn't shoot. How's your arm? Is it broken? No, no, it's just tore up a little. I better stop him before he gets on a horse. She just stood out there in the kitchen and heard every word that was said. I never thought about her aiming to help him. Barn doors open. We can walk right up there. No, no, we can't do that. Here, we'll wait here by the corner of the house. You get out behind that rain barrel. Might as well. I sure ain't much use. Now you've seen it. Don't you try to stop me now, Marshal. It's no use to run. Hold it, Glenn. Yeah. 
and hit him right in the head, Mr. Dillon. He ducked down. I was shooting for his middle. How come he rode straight for you? Why, why didn't he go the other way? Well, he knew our horses were out in front. He wanted to get to them before we did. Well, there's one man that won't go to jail. Oh, my. Here comes his wife. This is Dennis James. Say, remember way back when this melody was popular? There's something very special about a long-time favorite, isn't there? Well, folks feel the same way about one of Kellogg's favorites, Kellogg's All Bran. Going on 41 years now, it's been America's most popular good food way to fight irregularity from lack of bulk. Because it's whole bran, Kellogg's All Bran gentles away irregularity safely and reliably. And because it's deep toasted for extra crispness, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Bran, Kellogg's All Bran. That's A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Brand. Come in. Uh, hello, Doc. Oh, oh man. I'm all finished. Doc says a couple of weeks. I can start using my arm again, Mr. Jones. Good. Yeah, there's providing you keep it in that sling, Chester. Oh, I will, Doc. I'll be real careful. Is it all right, Doc? Yes, it looks clean, Matt, but I'll I'll change the dressing of the day for a while so as I can watch it. Did you get the horses put out, Mr. Don? Yeah, I took care of them. And we better start looking for Hank Page. <laughs> Near midnight, Chester. You go to bed and I'll find him. Huh? No, sir, I'm going with you. Oh, I know I ain't much help, but I can look one way while you're looking the other. Well, that's up to you. Up to him? You know, I've heard of cases where this sort of thing was up to the doctor, not the patient. I ain't no patient, Doc. Oh, no. Well, maybe you'll begin to feel more like a patient when I give you my bill. Bill? You're going to charge me for pouring that smelly old stuff on my arm and wrapping it up with a couple of little rags? Uh, Chester, your bill has just gone up a dollar. You were not, Doc. I didn't really mean that. <laughs> You better shut up and come with me, Chester. You'll be a lot safer. Yes, ma'am. Sure am. See you later, Doc. Yes, well, Matt, is there going to be a shooting? I don't know. But you better not go to bed for a while yet. Oh, I'll be here. Chester, I guess he's not planning to go home tonight. 
you'd be disappointed if he is. That was in Texas Trail, Mr. Jones. Yeah. Hey, look. There's Jerry Bigger. He just come out. You stay here. Yes, sir. Marshal. Did you do that shooting? Well, I waited. I told you I would. You waited for what? Well, to kill Hank Pete. What? It's after midnight. Five minutes or so. I just figured you wasn't going to do nothing about it. Now you figured wrong. Were both those shots yours? Sure they were. I didn't even wait for him to draw. You know, a man like that don't deserve a chance. You should have let the law decide about that digger. I'd have arrested him. He'd have gone to jail. All right, then why hadn't you done it? Because I was busy. Busy doing what? Trying to take Glick. Trying? Where is he? He's dead. And I guess I beat you to him. Now, you didn't beat me to Hank Pate, Marshal. For your sake, I wish I had. All right, Digger, you're under arrest for murder. Oh, no, no. Now, that ain't fair. I warned you. No. Mr. Dillon, you all right? What's the matter? Did he try drawing you? I, I couldn't see him. I tried, Chester. Maybe I should have let him. But then you'd have had to shoot him. I know. This way, like I told him, I... I probably just saved him for the end of another rope. Pepsi-Cola has of disappearing fast? It seems you to understand when you remember how every ice-cold ounce of Pepsi tingles with a taste that everybody in the family enjoys. And then, too, there's no time limit on Pepsi. Day or night, with meals or by itself, work days or weekends, for parties or all by yourself. Ah, but the thing that really makes Pepsi go fast is its light touch. Pepsi always refreshes lightly, without filling. So a Pepsi just never tastes like too much. To make sure your supply of Pepsi meets the demand, always buy an extra carton or two. You can't run a household without it. and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Lawrence Dobkin, Barney Phillips, and Harry Bartell. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. After which we join the Mitch Miller Show on the CBS Radio Network.